Hi, my name is Sunny Ray, and I am the South Asia Channel Manager for Kwanzaa Consulting Inc., based out of Markham, Ontario, Canada. I'm just going to start my timer here because I heard that most presentations should be under 20 minutes. So I'm actually not going to try and do this entire presentation under 20 minutes because I know it takes longer. Um, I'm going to actually just do the first third of this presentation. And so I'm going to take my sweet time and talk about other random things. So my name is once again Sunny Ray. Uh, this is my year seven, I believe, with Kwanzaa. And uh, although I'm the South Asia Channel Manager today, I started at Kwanzaa looking after half of North America, um, namely the South and the West. I did that for about three years and then I became our company's inside sales manager. I did that for a year or two, uh, then was our company's uh, Latin America channel manager. Um, so my Spanish is not that great, but I'm working on it. And after that, I became for a short period of time our company's technology evangelist. Um, and so as of January of 2012, I am helping look after our South Asia market. So. To Kwanzaa, engineer a better world, enable educators, engage researchers, and empower industry. In a nutshell, that's what I feel and what we feel at Kwanzaa that we do. Now, presentation overview, general Kwanzaa overview. So, as I mentioned before, I'm going to do a, an overview today in the first uh, 20 minutes presentation today. Uh, mainly about how we enable educators, how we engage research, and how we empower industry on a very high level. And then um, the next video that we do will dive deeper into the solutions for teaching and research, uh, such as the Rotary family, and mechatronic controls, and then when we talk about research, we'll be talking about really cool things like robotics and haptics and unmanned vehicle systems and helicopters and crazy things. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about also some of the new developments that Kwanzaa's got coming down the line. So just in a nutshell, Kwanzaa, I believe we're in our 23rd year of business. Um, it has been, uh, so when I joined Kwanzaa about seven years ago, the company had, I believe, between 15 to 20 employees. Uh, today we're near 60. And uh, and the word Kwanzaa, just, just for those of you who uh, may be interested, it actually means uh, question and answer, or that's where the word originally came from. And so this first third of uh, this presentation for today will talk about how we enable educators. And the term Kwanzaa was uh, actually you know, thought up by our founder, uh, Dr. Jacob, Dr. Jacob Apkarian. Uh, he... Uh, his, his, you know, this is a quote from him, my goal is to bridge the gap between theory and practice. So Dr. Jacob Apkarian was a controls professor. He taught in, in Canada and he's a very good controls professor. So while he was a controls professor, he realized that there was a disconnect between theory and application in the engineering lab. and. For someone like me, my controls experience, at least in my when I took engineering, uh, was pretty bad. Meaning, we just pulled up a bunch of computers and a bunch of simulations, and we were told about overshoot and this and that, and none of it really made any sense. And uh, you know, we figured out how to do well on the exams, but when it came time for me, on a personal note, when I uh, started my first job at Hydrogenics, which at the time was one of the fastest growing companies in, in Canada. Um, hydrogenics, I, I was a test engineer looking after hydrogen fuel cell stacks and the first job I had um, was looking after this massive uh, fuel cell which had something like 2,000 liters of hydrogen flow through it per minute and uh, it was just insane and on the front of it was a PID controller you know, uh, and I had no clue how to work it. And, Maybe I'll tell the story uh, another time, but long story short, I had an accident, um, and one of my stacks actually exploded, and it was 
one of the most embarrassing uh, professional experiences of my career. But now I believe that you know, um, you know, it's important to learn from your your past and and apply it to your future. So at Kwanzer, we help bridge that gap for students early on, so they don't have mishaps like the one I had. Mechatronic control systems. I mean, what is mechatronic control systems? It's really everything. Okay, so uh, more technically, it's when you take computers mechanical systems, electronic systems, and control systems, and you combine them together. Uh, the intersection of those four disciplines is mechatronics. And of course, it involves things like mechanical CAD, digital control systems, control electronics, uh, electronic systems. And along the perimeter of this circle, you see all the different industries that it impacts, such as aerospace, medical, xerography, defense systems, and so on and so forth, manufacturing. Right? So we see that it has a huge impact. Um, in fact, you know, because we're talking about Jacob, let's see if this video... The next breakthrough up. in technology will likely be in robotics. We are physical beings, and sooner or later we'd like to manipulate our environment in more and more complex ways. As the system... So I was hoping to show a video of Jacob, but I don't think that's going to work. So we'll have to figure out how to do that the next time. So, Enable Educator. So, Kwanzaa, over the last 23 years, has had the privilege of serving um, nearly 2,500 plus universities around the world. So, every top university, whether it's Stanford or Harvard or University of Toronto or Los Angeles or, you know, IITs and MITs, um, you know, pretty much every major institution, uh, engineering institution in the world has something of Kwanzaa's, whether it be in their electrical department, um, most likely, or mechanical department, or aerospace, or civil, or whatever, um, robotics, or, um, or mechatronics. So Kwanzaa's uh, within India itself, uh, we recently started a partnership, a center of excellence with College of Engineering Pune. Um, you know, there's IIT Mumbai and IIT Delhi that we're starting to work with more closely. Um, and IIT Hyderabad are, are, are clients of Kwanzaa's as well. And, and the list just keeps going on. Uh, we're currently in the process of speaking with IIT Jodhpur as well. So um, on, a, on a center of excellence. And as you see here, Enable Educators, new and innovative solutions. So over the last 23 years, we've had a chance to build over 100 different experiments. So robots and helicopters and simple things just you know that's where it actually started or this this big thing that you see on the left side here that's a rotary servo system and that was one of our original systems and that to this day is is one of our um, core products and as you see there's haptic devices and unmanned systems and shake tables i mean we'll save the, the product descriptions for another day uh, another presentation and i will be doing more detailed uh, presentations on <clears throat> specific product groups and and whatnot as time goes on to help um, to help raise awareness of Kwanzaa, uh, namely in South Asia. So, um, modular turnkey workstation. So whenever there's a Kwanzaa solution that's being offered, um, there are really four components that are involved. So there's the uh, there's the actual system, the plant that you see on the top left hand side, and then there's usually a computer. Um, you know, whether it's a laptop, which is, actually all of our systems are laptop friendly. You don't need complicated boards and uh, PCI boards and whatnot. You can just have USB. So uh, first thing, software is important. So we, um, obviously most of our clients uh, to date have been, have been using MATLAB and Simulink and we provide Quark, uh, which is a great, powerful, powerful tool. Um, for for rapid control prototyping, and it's really been the backbone of uh, of, of much of what's happened at Quanzer. Um, more recently, I would say in the last uh, five to seven years, Quanzer has been aligning with LabVIEW in an unprecedented manner. Uh, LabVIEW is uh, LabVIEW is a is a strong partner of Quanzer's, and we are doing a lot of development with National Instruments. Um, as of the last uh, year or two especially. So lots to talk about on that front, but we'll save it for another presentation. Curriculum is the third component. You need curriculum to teach a course, and then you need the hardware peripherals. So you need your power modules, you need your data acquisition cards. 
And the beauty of Kwanzaa experiments is, is that everything you see in the top right, bottom right, and bottom left uh, is, is somewhat constant. You can, you can use it to serve different experiments. And so um, that's kind of what we mean about modularity in one aspect. So you can, you, know, you can buy an IMB or you can buy a shake table or you can buy a servo or a helicopter. And you know, pretty much with, you know, with the basic software and the basic hardware, you are able to run all laser beam stabilization experiments. You're able to run most of the experiments that we offer. Um, but modularity goes a step further as well in the sense that you know, the rotary family, like I spoke of here, um, this you can use to teach position and speed control, but then you can also... You can also use this system to do some crazy things like um, like you can do an inverted pendulum or a flexible link or um, you know a, a gyro stable platform or so there's something like 14 modules that go with that okay so again more details later enable educators so one of the big things that we've noticed, one of the big trends, is the shift towards building multidisciplinary labs. Um, so pool several engineering department resources, and you get more out of your lab activity with reduced amount of overhead to building, running, and maintaining a lab. Um, that's uh, I love that quote because it really speaks to the modularity aspect that I just spoke about earlier. So you could literally have a lab with 12 stations or 15 stations with the hardware, the software, the computers, the everything set up. Um, and then your lab technician, uh, let's say the electrical engineering professor calls and says, we need a rotary servo system to do our hands-on lab. Boom, he makes a call and the lab tech brings it out and you're running an electrical lab. And then the next session, there's a civil engineering course and you need a, a civil engineering lab and you need a couple of shake tables. To bring out the shake table, you know, 1.5s or 2s or whatever, or, you know, whether you're driving helicopters for an aerospace uh, course. I mean you can really use the same space to serve a lot of uh, a lot of different disciplines and that's something that more and more universities are are looking towards so let's say for example when we visit universities you know you go to the mechanical engineering department and boom you see PCs in their labs you see software you see data acquisition cards you see amplifiers you see lab space right then you go to the civil engineering department and you see the same thing in the aerospace same thing electrical engineering same thing like just a re you know if we're going to use money um, why and, and it's the same you know oftentimes labs aren't even being used all the time in india it's different but in north america especially you can really combine a lot of these um, efforts and the real the truth is is that for example in a company like Kwanzer you know, we don't have the EEs that sit in a different building and the MEs that work somewhere else and this, you know, the... And no, everybody works together in one environment. And I think when you offer a multidisciplinary lab, you allow the, you know, you allow different departments to come in together and work together as well. So I think that's important. So like I said, let's say you have a civil engineering lab. Boom, you bring out the shake table, connect it. Let's say you're having an electrical engineering lab. Now you've got, you know, the SRVO2 system, or mechanical engineers prefer the IPO2s, the, um, the linear inverted pendulum system, or aerospace might prefer a, you know, a two degree of freedom helicopter. So any one of those, your lab technician just rolls it out and boom, you're, you know, you're off for the races. So that top left picture, I think it was Lior that found that, but uh, that totally reminds me of what, uh, what, it felt like to um, to be in school, and you were just always drained. And, and you know, at the same time, universities are trying to save money, um, and we believe this multidisciplinary concept really allows the effective use of space. Number one, number two, you get new technology and more workstations for the same amount spent. Um, you realize savings, but most of all, you get better students. Why do we say better? I mean. I guess the word better sounds kind of bad, but um, you get students who are motivated. You get motivated students. You get students that care because they can see the gyroscope in front of them, right? They can see, um, you know, the helicopter in front of them and moving in different directions as they vary, you know, proportional gains or whatever. I mean, uh, it's really limitless. So that kind of concludes the first part of the presentation, which is uh, for today, which is enable educators. But another, I'd say, you know, twenty percent of Kwanzaa's focus, uh, you know, if uh, if enabling if enabling educators has been, let's say, seventy percent, researchers um, have been about twenty percent of Kwanzaa's 
um, focus. And really what, what we bring to the table is we are, a at our core, a real-time controls and mechatronics company. And so here's an example of where Dr. Venkat Krovi, a professor from the State University of New York of Buffalo, came to um, Kwanzer and, you know, had shown us a, a range of different, um, different hexapods or Stuart platforms that he was looking at or considering in the market. And upon, um, you know, upon speaking with some of the people at Kwanzer, we worked with his team uh, very closely to be able to develop this, this six-stoff hexapod, which is now a product for, for Kwanzer. In fact, India Institute of Space Science and Technology recently purchased a six-stoff hexapod. And so as you see here, the Kwanzer Ampac and the Quark software, and really our expert, I believe, our core expertise in mechatronics and control systems is what allowed us to, you know, work on such uh, interesting projects. And here are, you know, a, a few pictures of different robots that Kwanzer, um, uh, that Kwanzer works with. So, for example, the Denso robot, which is actually the, my favorite robot, like, out of all the, you know, really, really intense robots that we sell, that's, that's, that's the one that I believe is very, very powerful. And Kwanzer with Enzo offers a, an amazing solution. We have a Tudoff um, planar you know, pantograph. This is like a you know, remote signing or remote um, writing device. There's the KUKA robot, and we support a whole range of KUKA robots now. I mean, um, if you are working with KUKA, definitely get in touch with Kwanzer. <clears throat> uh, the Thermo robot, which is a legacy robot for us, we've been we've had it for many many years, and the Omni bundle or the Omni <clears throat> platform by Sensible. So some of the different areas that we've done work in: needle insertion, surgical robots, rehabilitation, endonasal surgery. I mean, it really goes on and on and on. But uh, again, we're going to be doing uh, presentations on each of those areas to, to, to share more. Um, now, engage researchers, unmanned vehicle systems. Now, this is another thing. So Jacob uh, had a nice relationship with uh, somebody at the DRDC. And um, again, we'll keep, this, we'll keep this to a minimum here because I don't know how much I'm allowed to share. But... Uh, you know, we worked on a very, very interesting collaborative control of unmanned air vehicles and ground vehicles. Um, and again, um, we'll find out if, uh, if we can share more about that and we'll get more information to you soon. And the last piece here is really empower industry. And this, I would say, has been about 10% to 15% of our company's focus. And it's really working with companies, large, large companies like namely National Instruments and many other companies to uh, really usher in this era of automatic control. So the 21st century will be known as the age of automatic control. Um, just spoken by Dr. Mark Spong. Now, some of the different companies that we do work with, like I mentioned, the MathWorks, uh, you know, National Instruments in a huge way, uh, uh, you know, MapleSoft, KUKA, Denso, QNX, Sensible. And so our goal is really about collaboration and working together. Um, we have, uh, I believe, close to 20, 25 distributors around the world and maybe about 30 to 35 agents. Um, you know, and, and, and I believe this, this list is expanding and this presentation may be a little old, so please do excuse me. Um, but in essence, if you remember nothing else about what I spoke about today, uh, to sum it up in a nutshell, Quanzer, if, if you're a professor, if you're a student, engineering student, uh, you know, if you're a director at a, an engineering institution, you know, in a nutshell, what we do is we help captivate students, we help motivate them after they're in your program, and then we help graduate quality students so that they're not, um, you know, so that they know what they're doing when they're in industry. Um, and we work closely with industrial partners to make that happen. So enable educators, we you know, engage researchers as well. So you know, motivation has not just to do with undergrad, but also you know, to really be able to make research meaningful, it needs to be done on you know, hardware. It needs to be shown to the world that it's possible. Um, and so we, we help motivate researchers and then, like I said, empower industry as well. So that concludes my presentation, and I believe I'm under 20 minutes, so that's perfect. Thank you for listening.